CD. And uh, we're also joined by Chantal Key, who's providing technical support. Uh, so uh, we're going to, if you've been on one of these webinars in the past, we've had a couple now, uh, the format will pretty much be the same. Uh, we're going to keep all of the phone lines muted. So uh, if you do have questions, you're going to have to use uh, some of the, uh, the you're going to have to type it in uh, through the question box. It might be called Q&A box on your uh, GoToWebinar panel. Um, and we'll go ahead and we'll stop the presentation periodically throughout uh, to give, uh, give you a chance to uh, give us a chance to, to respond to your questions. Um, and then if we don't have a chance to respond to all of your questions, um, we can always follow up with DCED directly. Uh, there will also be a couple times uh, some polls and brief opportunities to participate through polls. So uh, make sure you, you stay tuned and, uh, and, and get ready to answer some of those questions. Tina, did you want to uh, introduce yourself briefly? Hi, thank you for attending. Uh, this is our last grant-based accounting webinar. Uh, we have had two previous webinars. Uh, one is specific for CDBG grantees, the other was specific for home, and this is our uh, conclusion webinar that we'll be talking about uh, frequently asked questions and touch upon uh, the previous two webinars to refresh your memory. Uh, I believe we still have some 2015 contracts going out, so I hope you find some benefit to the webinar. Uh, also, materials will be posted online to the Federal Resource Library uh, within the next two weeks. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Tina. So uh, what I'd like to do now is we'll just uh, we'll keep moving forward with our, uh, with our agenda. So uh, like Tina said, we're going to go over grants-based accounting yet again, <laughs> one more time. Uh, just very briefly, we're not going to get into all the details. Uh, but we will kind of highlight some of those resources that Tina mentioned, including uh, past webinars uh, and two resources, one being a guide that will help you step by step, by step through some of the IDIS screens, and also uh, an FAQ, uh, frequently asked questions that we've encountered um, since we started presenting this material back in May. So uh, we would like to highlight a couple of those FAQs as part of the, the, uh, the webinar, and we're calling those our FAQ Hot Topics. Uh, the webinar will also include uh, an example of where we go into IDIS and, and walk through a CDBG activity setup and funding, and we can also uh, demonstrate uh, what the draw is going to look like. And then we'll do the same thing for home. Uh, and again, if you've been on these webinars before, this is more just a refresher, uh, and just to kind of remind you of some of the key decision points and, and where to pull that information. Uh, we'll also include uh, some demonstrations on looking at IDIS reports just to, uh, after the fact, be able to review how your activity is set up and where those drawdowns are coming, uh, and maybe you might be able to identify potential problems that you can communicate back to DCED. Then we'll finally have a, a wrap up and uh, again we'll, we'll be trying to answer your questions throughout the webinar. Uh, I'll take periodic breaks so if you do have questions please get those in. Uh, we want to make sure that we, uh, we get all your questions answered and um, you know, you'll have a, a successful 2015. Okay, so uh, we're going to start right off with a poll. We only got two, so this is the first poll. Have you implemented the new GBA rules, GBA being grants-based accounting, uh, with your Pennsylvania grant? Uh, and you got three choices here. Yes, I'm a pro. B, yes, but I still have some questions. Or C, no, I am new to grants-based accounting. Is it like an MBA, GBA, MBA? So, uh, Chantel, if you can go ahead and open up that poll. Okay, the polls are now open. And on your WebEx toolbar, you'll see some uh, blue buttons on top. One of them should be polling. If you click on that button, it'll open the polling um, text box, and you'll be able to vote inside that box. We have about 40% um, of our participants that have voted so far.
Okay, we're about at a 58, Bill. Do you want me, you want me to close it? Yeah, let's give them two more seconds. Some people okay. might be uh, still deciding. I don't know. Some undecided voters out there. Okay, the, clo the poll is closing in about 15 seconds. Okay, where are we at? Okay, and I'm now sharing the results. Okay, so it looks like uh, people are kind of evenly split between uh, B and C. Still didn't have some questions and can completely new to grant based accounting. So uh, some of the some of the refresher stuff I think will uh, will help you. And again, if you guys do have specific questions, please make sure you get it in there and uh, and, and get your questions in using the uh, the Q and A. And uh, we'll try to answer them. And I can't. I, th I think the FAQ and the uh, the guides, once we post them, uh, should be great resources to you as well. All right. So uh, going over the, uh, the just the background of, and I, I think I have my polling still open. Let me close that down there. All right. Hopefully you can all see my screen just fine now. Uh, the most important thing to understand is uh, DCED is not hoisting this upon you. Uh, this is not their idea. <laughs> this is uh, a response from HUD to some uh, OIG findings that they had in regards to basically uh, OIG came out to HUD and said, listen, uh, we don't like the way you're doing things with first in, first out. We really need to be able to track these grants and all of the data associated with these grants uh, on a year-by-year -year basis. So um, what happened is HUD had to kind of have a transition plan from what was called FIFO, first in, first out, to grants-based accounting. So uh, before 2015, this would be uh, all of the 2014 grants and before that uh, Pennsylvania and uh, through Pennsylvania that you have received, uh, IDIS used uh, an accounting process called first in, first out. So even in your mind, and according to your budget and, and the state budget, you are drawing against a 2014 budgeted activity. Those funds, if, uh, if they were available, might have been coming from an earlier year, like 2010 or 2011 or 2012. And you or the state really didn't have any control over it just because that was the way IDIS was built. And essentially that was the issue that OIG had with with HUD accounting practices. So again, you know, that's second bullet there. HUD funds were dispersed against the oldest grants uh, that had available funds regardless of what you guys put in there. So they wanted to stop that. They wanted to give you guys a little bit more control and basically have the system respond to, uh, to that shortfall. So if it was a 14 grant, or well, let's go ahead and say 15 since that's when it started. If it was a 15 grant, you could identify that that 15 activity uh, it's associated with a 15 grant is going to come when I draw down the funds and reimburse myself. Uh, those are going to come from the 15 grant. So it, it's going to start with 15, which means if you have some older funds, if you have some 2014 still out there, if you have some 2013 or older, uh, those projects are still going to work on that FIFO basis. So keep that in mind as we go forward. So, um, you know, you're going to still see some of these older grants that operate under those older rules uh, until all those dollars are gone. So under grants-based accounting, um, draws will be drawn from the year specified by the user on the activity funding stream. So if you fund an activity from the 2015 grant on the funding screen, when you go to do the drawdown, it should automatically show that it's coming from that 2015 grant and it's not coming from an older grant. And we'll kind of go through this with, uh, with the demonstration as well, and you can see how, how it's going to be handled differently. So again, just to emphasize, uh, this is all HUD's idea, not DCED. Uh, so DCED has to kind of uh, comply with what HUD says, and, and that means we all have to comply with what HUD says, right? All right, let me uh, get to the next screen here. 
So uh, as we walk through what's changing, we thought it would be a good idea just to kind of summarize it by, based on the paperwork that you see and the IDIS screens that you see. So uh, some of the changes you'll see are to your uh, program contract, sometimes uh, called the blueback. Uh, you also receive from DCED uh, the IDIS setup letter, and that's going to be a key element in deciding how to enter the, enter the data into IDIS. Uh, and finally, the invoices, you know, how are, how is that information going to change? And, and the corresponding, you know, activities in IDIS would be the activity set up and funding. Once you get your IDIS set up letter, you can go ahead and set up and fund your activities based on the information in the IDIS set up letter. Uh, requesting draw vouchers that will correspond with your invoices. And uh, reporting accomplishments. Uh, a lot of the uh, FAQs uh, kind of try to explain uh, kind of the nuances of reporting accomplishments, especially how they're different for CDBG and home. Um, you know, you might have an activity that's funded for 15, but if it's open for three years, um, you're going to have to report on that CDBG accomplishments each and every year for 15, 16, and 17. So we just want to make sure you press the right buttons when it comes to IDIS. So in addition to this webinar, and, uh, you know, basically uh, DCED has posted the past webinars to the, uh, to the library. And uh, once we get these FAQs uh, finalized and approved and the, the, the grant-based accounting guide, we'll go ahead and put those up there as well. Most of you are probably familiar with it. Uh, basically, if you go to this web address, I'm going to go ahead and slide over to, uh, to a web browser and just show you. So this is uh, that web address, dceb.pa.gov slash library. So this is their, their library. And when you get here, you have this uh, kind of folder tree. So you would want to go to Federal Program Resource Library. That would open up. And we would choose IDIS and invoicing. And then under the IDIS folder, we have all the grants-based accounting uh, resources, including videos and PowerPoints. And then again, once we get the FAQs up and running uh, and the uh, and the desk guide approved, we'll go ahead and post that here as well. Okay, so very good resource. Chances are a lot of you know where to find that already. Okay, so uh, while we wait for those finalized FAQs, we are going to talk about a couple of them. Uh, we organized them into a couple of different kind of categories, topics, if you will. Uh, including terms and definitions. I know a lot of you had questions last time about, well, you know, what's the difference between a program year and a multi-year activity versus an activity that spans multiple years. So they'll, they'll be, uh, we'll kind of further define those under terms and definitions. Uh, some, some key tips for planning, budgeting, and reprogramming. Uh, there's a whole section on just IDIS specific questions. Uh, there is uh, a couple questions regarding timeliness and how uh, grants-based accounting can affect the timely use of your funds, uh, and that's a, a really hot topic because we want to make sure that uh, you do use your funds in a timely manner. Accomplishment reporting, again, there was a lot of questions we had about, well, where do I report these accomplishments? It's a 2015 activity, but they occurred in 2016, so how does that ha happen? And then and repayments as well. <laughs> Excuse me. So we're going to go through about five or six of the common questions that we just want to point out and uh, see if there's any further explanation needed. Uh, hot topic number one is uh, multi-year versus an activity that spans multi multiple calendar years. So uh, when I say or DCED says uh, we're dealing with a multi-year activity, what we really mean is we're talking about an activity that is funded from multiple allocation years. So basically an activity that is tied to more than one grant year. Uh, and it's tied, therefore, it's tied to multiple blue, bluebacks and contracts. Um, so one example might be uh, homeowner rehabilitation, where uh, you're using a little bit of 14 plus some 15, or, you know, going into the future, maybe a little bit of 15 and some 16. Uh, that's going to affect how that activity is reported in IDIS. 
you can also have an activity that's funded just from a single allocation. Uh, let's say it's a big uh, public improvements project. Maybe it's a street improvements or water and sewer. And it was only associated with one allocation, but it just takes longer than that one calendar year to finish. And a lot of your public facilities and infrastructure projects are going to fall into this category. Uh, so that's not necessarily a multi-year activity uh, because it's still associated with a, a single allocation. But uh, that means you're going to have to report on that one allocation or that one activity for each year it's open. So uh, that's kind of the, the difference we want to make on, on that specific uh, topic. So there's multi-year activities and then there's activities that are funded from a single allocation, but you still have to report on them in, in multiple program years. Okay. Hot topic number two. Uh, what if I have a small amount of remaining funds from an older year, let's say 2013, and I want to go ahead and couple that with 2015 funds? Uh, so maybe you have a couple thousand dollars and you have a, a big, let's say, um, a big street improvements project and you want to basically just take some of that 13, uh, some, some of the trainers I work with, they'll call it budget dust, you know, basically uh, just little leftover amounts and, uh, you know, basically apply it to the overall new budget that's, uh, that's coming down the pipe in 2015. Maybe it's a big public improvement. So uh, that, that might be an issue because what's going to happen is uh, the three-year timeliness test is tied to the oldest grant. So your 2013 funds still have to be spent within three years, and they still have to meet that national objective within three years. So whenever you have a small amount of funds remaining from an older years, uh, it, it's going to make sense to basically apply those funds to an activity that's going to have a relatively short time frame. Uh, because again, uh, just by reprogramming those dollars doesn't give you an extension or that project an extension. You still have the three year timeline uh, from the original allocation. So in this case, 2013 at the end of 2016 <coughs> would be, uh, would you be your completion deadline. So whenever you're, you're, you have that small amount, just make sure you, you try to put it towards activities that, um, that are going to be finished quickly, you know, with the, sh with the shortest turnaround. So uh, the note there down at the bottom is saying you're really not moving these funds into 2015. Um, they continue to, to, to have that 2013 identity and with all those same uh, deadlines that that 2013 identity implies. If you have any questions about that, again, please get them in on the Q&A. Uh, I'm going to take a break after just uh, one more hot topic and ask Shauna if we have any questions that have come in to date. Okay, moving right along. Um, a lot of you had questions about uh, using CDBG administrative funds and, you know, if they're tied to uh, any specific year. Uh, I'm going to address that second bullet at the bottom first and then uh, address that first bullet. So uh, you can, as a grantee, you can use from uh, ads and dollars from any year to cover costs of any other planning grant. So, I mean, for example, let's say you have some 2013 admin dollars left and you need to do some administrative related activity uh, for your 14 or 15 uh, allocation, that's fine. That's totally okay. Um, so, or if you have to prepare for your next year's allocation, you can use those admin dollars and, and it, it's, it's really not, there's, there's not a lot of oversight there. However, the thing you have to watch out for, and that's this, uh, this top bullet here, is starting with the 2015 grants, if you end up repaying any more, any money and giving it back, to, uh, to DCED, uh, that's going to affect how much admin uh, you can use. So basically at the end of the day, uh, if you end up using, let's say, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to follow along with the example here. So uh, let's say you return, uh, well, let's say you had a $500,000 grant and 
right off the bat, you spent all of the 18% for admin. So the 18% of the $500,000 was completely expended. But uh, at the end of the day, you didn't use all $500,000 and you returned some of that money. In this example, you returned $100,000. Well, if you return that $100,000, all of a sudden, you're over your 18% on the whole uh, grant amount. So DCED will ask you to return $18,000 would need to be remitted, remitted to cover the overage in administration costs. So I know a lot of you will probably have questions about that. Again, uh, starting with 2015, so go ahead and, and get those questions in there. Um, this could be a big change for you and uh, it's something you definitely want to keep an eye on. Anytime uh, you know there's a possible of remittance or, or repayment, um, you, you definitely want to uh, to keep an extra sharp eye on that. Um, with that said, Shauna, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to you real quick and see if we do have any questions showing up in the Q and A box. So we have one so far, Bill. Um, so this is. Uh, question just a second ago. Are you saying we can no longer get an extension on old funding? Uh, so I believe uh, you still can, but uh, the, the conditions and the, the cases where you have, you can get an extension are different. Uh, Tina, do you want to uh, elaborate on the possibility of extensions? The, the extension to the three-year project completion rule uh, may be granted, but they will not automatically be granted. Uh, the reason being is because we are under the grants-based accounting and, and DCED needs to watch our timeliness. Uh, so at the point when you are asking the question about the extension, you're approaching or should be pretty close to your three-year project completion rule. So uh, you would have to have a very good reason to submit to your grant manager why uh, the project uh, was not completed or why it wasn't completed on time, why it was completed under budget, what you are planning to do with those funds, so it's just not automatically going to be granted. I think a, a key point that, um, and I, I know that uh, DCED wanted this to be highlighted, is really just effective communication. Um, so if you think that you're going to need an extension or uh, if you're going to be revising your budget in any significant manner and it's going to affect, uh, you know, which allocations dollars are coming from, uh, try to, you know, head that off and, and communicate that up front with the CED as soon as you possibly can uh, because that's going to give you more flexibility and it's going to give DCED more flexibility in complying with HUD's overall wishes. That's a great question. Uh, is there anything else you would like to add to that, Tina? Or? And no, you've covered all the, the basic points there. And, and like you said, uh, if you do have any problems or if you anticipate that you will have a problem, continue to talk to your grant manager, grant manager way before those three years are up. Be in constant communication uh, so that we can address issues before they become issues. Good point. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move on to the next slide. So another one uh, key confusing aspect about uh, about reporting in CDBG, especially for these activities that span more than one year uh, or that they come from more than one allocation, and that's, again, we're calling those as multi-year activities. Uh, how is that going to be reported in IDIS? And we can include this in as part of the demo if you'd like. If you want to, if you would like that part of the demo, you know, why don't you go ahead and, and put that into the Q&A, and um, I can kind of go over some of the differences there. But if you have an activity that is funded from more than one allocation, what's going to happen uh, is you'll have more than one activity. You're going to have a separate activity in IDIS to represent each allocation's portion. Um, in the past, I believe we used um, Sunbury uh, uh, Streets Reconstruction or Utility Reconstruction as an example, and they received money 
and or they used part of their 2013 allocation and part of their 2014 allocation to report uh, that one overall project that's coming from multiple allocations. So what's going to happen is all of the data and all of the accomplishments is going to be associated with the oldest activity. So in our example there on the slide, it says water sewer project is funded in 13, 14, and 15. IDIS will contain three separate IDIS activities to represent the scope of work. All of the data and all of the accomplishments is going to be reported under the oldest activity, the, the activity associated with 2013. For 2014 and 2015, there's going to be that one field when you set up the activities that's going to say, is this activity, or are the accomplishments rather, are the accomplishments associated with another activity? And you would go ahead and check yes to that question for the 14 and 15 activity and reference back to the 2013 activity. So uh, again, you'll have three separate activities. Each one will have a budget, and the budget will tie back to how much of each allocation you're giving to that scope of work. But you're only going to have one set of accomplishments, and those are going to be associated with the oldest activity, or rather the activity associated with the oldest year, in this case, 2013. Uh, one extra note on that particular topic is uh, if you're charging program delivery costs, um, you, you want to be uh, associating those costs with the proper year as well, especially if you have, uh, you know, three different activities. You want to keep, uh, keep those budgets in line with the allocation from which they're supposed to come. Okay, hot topic number five. I almost want to say hot pocket, but it's a hot topic number five. You're selected on the activity funding screen. So this gets to the heart of the grants-based accounting, and you're going to see changes starting with your 15 grant. You might see multiple options, and you just want to make sure that you follow that IDIS setup letter uh, to basically determine what year you're choosing uh, when you get to that activity funding screen. So if the IDIS setup letter specifies an allocation year before 2015, you're going to use the top level or the top section of that screen, and you'll actually have to type in a year. So if the, if the setup letter says from 13, you'll type in 2013. If it says 2014, you put in 2014, so on and so forth. And everything is keyed, all of the reports, all of a lot of the uh, compliance, uh, like the admin and the, uh, the public services and uh, the national objectives and all that good stuff, it's all tied back to that one field. So you really need to make sure that you put in the field that's specified in the IDI setup letter. If it says 2015 or later, you're going to use the bottom half of that activity funding screen. And again, I'm going to go through this on the, on the demonstration so you can see uh, how it looks. But 2015 and later is going to be handled a little bit differently in that instead of just one big lump sum of funds, uh, it's going to be broken out um, by year, and you're, you're going to see that. So if you get to that screen and, and you don't see the right year, or maybe uh, for, for some reason the, the funds aren't available, what you'll probably have to do is call somebody at DCED, and it might be that uh, they need to adjust some of the funding for you because that funding is going to be based on what's called a subgrant. We're not going to get into that, but if the money doesn't, if that screen doesn't look like uh, it should, or that you think it should, uh, you should probably give DCED a call right away uh, just to verify, okay? And again, we're, we're going to get into these screens and we're going to take a look at them uh, under a demo. So if what I'm saying doesn't make sense, uh, please, please, please get a question in there and uh, we'll try to address it. Okay, final hot topic, here we go. Reporting and updating the narrative for every activity at the end of the calendar year, even those without draws or any type of activity, any type of, you know, numeric accomplishments, we should say. Um, so for home, that's really not necessary. Home's a little bit a different beast than CDBG. For home, 
the rule is, and this is coming again straight from HUD, is you have to get all your accomplishment data into IDIS within 120 days of doing the final disbursement. So let's say you're doing a rehab and the activity is funded for $35,000 and you draw down the final dollar and it has $35,000 of draws, so it has a zero balance. That starts a clock and uh, the clock has 120 days and you need to be able to basically report all of the accomplishments in IDIS and mark that activity as complete within those 120 days or uh, that, that activity will be flagged by the system and it might lock up the DCED's ability to set up new activities and your, your ability to set up new activities. So it's really important to get that accomplishment data for home into the system within 120 days of doing the final disbursement, okay? So let's talk about CDBG now. CDBG has a whole different set of rules. So um, if we look back to home, you know, you can have a home activity open for three years and no accomplishments, and that's totally fine. With CDBG, essentially you have to report on accomplishment data by the close of each year, so in this case by December 31st. So even if you haven't realized any benefits, if you can't report on the number of households that were helped, Maybe you're still in the pre-development phase, you're still doing architectural work or engineering work, and you really haven't, you know, moved any dirt around. Uh, that's when you can use that narrative field in IDIS, and you can give DCED an explanation and say, you know, just in plain English, say, okay, well, we went out to bid, we hired our contractor, construction's supposed to start on such and such date, we expect the whole project to be completed by this date, and you can provide just a, a narrative explanation of where you are in the process. So even if you don't do any draws or have any numeric accomplishments, it's still important to get that narrative. It, I would argue that it's even more important when you don't have any draws or accomplishments uh, to get that narrative in there because that gives PCED uh, a sense of where you are in the overall process. Okay. So uh, I always recommend even you know, any activity that's open in that program year, you try to get in the narrative, and again, it gets back to communication and making sure that everybody's on the same page. Okay, so the next step, uh, the next topic we're going to do is we're going to go in there and uh, do some demonstrations, one for home and one for CDBG. Before I do that, Shauna, do we have any questions in the queue? Hi, Bill. No, we do not. We would love to hear from you, so please write in. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to, uh, to IDIS, and it looks like I got booted out. Rule number one is stay active in IDIS, right? So I'm going to log back in. Hopefully it doesn't give me any grief. Okay, and I'm going to stick with Sunbury as my grantee who's demonstrating. Okay, so what I want to do is just kind of walk through um, some of the, the key points in terms of setting up the activity. Then we'll go into the funding screen and look what that looks like. And then finally, we'll uh, touch on some of the drawdowns. So um, so you guys don't have to sit there and be bored about me setting up an activity. Uh, I already set up a uh, an example activity. I'm going to go to plans, projects, activities. And um, it should be one of the very first ones. So I set up a rehab activity here. Uh, naming conventions, you guys can come up with your own. Uh, it's good to have one. Uh, you can get some guidance from DCED. I believe they don't want you to use the, the homeowner's name for rehabs, so uh, keep that in mind. But when you set up an activity, the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to indicate which project that that activity is associated with. So that project should also be reflective of uh, the information in your IDI setup letter. So when you're choosing your project, you can 
limit it by program year. Uh, Tina made a good point uh, earlier, is if I try to sort it by program, um, I'm not going to get any results. So don't don't ever, when you're looking for your projects, don't choose by program. Um, it's, it's somewhat of an error that HUD needs to address. But you can search by program year. So if I do 2015, you can see uh, Sunbury has 2015 entitlement, that's a CDBG project, and City of Sunbury 2015 home. These are just examples. So in this particular case, I chose the home project, right? So that's step number one, is just making sure that you associate your activity with the right project. You would go through and you would actually set up all of the, uh, the setup detail under this button right here for home, since this is a home activity. I already did that, and you can see it's ready to fund. So I'm going to use this little shortcut button right here, activity funding. I could also come up to funding and just search for the activity, but this is a little bit quicker. So I'm going to click on activity funding here. And this takes me to the funding screen for that particular activity. Uh, the system knows it's a home-funded activity because that's the type of data I provided when I set up the activity. So you can see I have two different pots of money. I have AD for administration. I have SU for all my non-admin money. You can see I don't have any money available for admin. It's all under SU. So and it's not funded right now. The total funding amount is zero. So how do I get this activity funded? Well. I'm going to come over here to add edit for the funding source I want to choose. So I click on add edit. I get this big scary home activity funding certification saying that yes, I did A, B, and C, and I made sure all of this is true and correct. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, I might be wearing orange for a while. So uh, I'm going to click I agree. And finally, we get to the, the heart of the matter. So this is the activity. Uh, the, the edit activity funding screen, um, and this is where you're going to see uh, the first in, first out, and the switch to grants-based accounting. So up here, again, is the top half of the screen, and you can see where it says grant year. It's not distinguishing between specific grant years. It's just lumping all of the pre-15 into one pot of money. So when I look at this, I don't know what allocation this money is associated with. Um, <clears throat> but you don't have to worry about that. Uh, all you need to do is worry about, okay, looking at my IDIS setup letter and saying, okay, well, that should be 2013. I would put in 2013 and put in a dollar amount here, okay? So, and uh, again, so if this is coming from, if you want to track this back to your 2013 rehab allocation, um, you would put in 2013 here. I'm actually going to treat this as a 2015 activity. So I'm assuming that this rehab at 1001 Market Street is funded out of my 2015 allocation. In that case, I'll see down here I have 2015. And then once DCV awards me a 2016 grant, assuming they do, I would see two different line items, 2015 and 2016, and I would see two different fields down here, one for each year. And it's going to allow me to specify how much is coming out of each year. So that's, that's the heart of the matter, folks. That's the big change. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, it's really going to affect uh, the way that the, uh, the DCED reports back to HUD and how it shows compliance with different uh, commitment caps and uh, and spending caps. So it's really important to make sure that you're referring back to your IDS setup letters when uh, when filling out this screen. So I'm going to go ahead and assume it's 25,000 from 15. Um, just for giggles, just uh, so you can see what it's going to look like on. Um, I'm actually going to use 14 on the drawdown. I'm going to go ahead and fund this partially out of 2014 as well just so you can see what it's going to look like on the drawdown screen, okay? So I have 25,000 coming from 15. I have a small little balance coming from 14. I'm going to go ahead and save that activity. So my total funding amount is now reflective of that, $25,500. Okay, so let's see what the drawdown screen is going to look like. Um, I'm going to go to Create Voucher. 
I'm going to use this activity number. I'm just going to copy it because I'm lazy. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in that activity number and hit continue. And you can see how that information is carried forward to the drawdown screen. Uh, if you look at grant year, you can see pre-15, there's that $500. And again, it's not specifying a specific year. I put in 14 on my uh, on my funding screen, and you'll probably see that that's going to come from a year other than 14. It's probably coming from an earlier year. Uh, and then my 15, since I, and this, so this is the difference, is since I specified in 15 on my funding screen, 25,000, that is already carrying forward that. So let's go ahead and draw that. I'm just going to draw maybe $33 from, from that pre-15 and maybe 10,000 from this and hit Confirm Voucher. So what happens is I get this drawdown confirmation, confirmation, and you can see that $33 is coming from what grant year? It's coming from 2011. Now you might be freaking out and saying, well, I put in 2014 on my funding screen. Is that okay? Did I do something wrong? I need to cancel my voucher? And the answer is no. The answer is, again, we're not going to be able to control what year pops up here because that's based on first in, first out. That's what's going away with your $15. So as long as, uh, you know, as long as your 15 amount's showing up and, you know, once you get your 16 and 17 and 18, once those uh, start popping up and th th those amounts are correct here, then you don't have to worry about anything 14 and earlier because, again, we have no control. We have zero control about what years those dollars are being assigned to for anything before 15. So I know that can be a little confusing. Just know that if 15 and out and uh, 15 years and going forward are good, then you don't have to worry about years 14 and before. Okay, so uh, why don't we take a short little question break? Uh, Shauna, is there any questions coming in about the demonstration or any of the other hot topics we already covered? Yeah, so there is one question on uh, accomplishments bill. Great. So um, this person wrote in, so for every open activity in IDIS, we have to report either accomplishments or a narrative by the end of the year, correct? That's a great question. So I would, I would preface that by saying for all of your CDBG activities, Yes, I, I would put it this way, and this is my preference, and again, talk to your CDBG program manager. Um, they might have a different feel, but basically, uh, if, especially if you don't have accomplishments, numeric accomplishments, like the number of households served and the number of persons served, or you don't have any drawdowns, I would say have an accomplishment narrative for every single open CDBG activity. And the narrative can be simply a restatement of uh, your numeric accomplishments if you had it. So let's say you have a housing rehab program or a home, let's, let's do home buyer. Let's say you use money for CDBG for a home buyer and you help 10 households with first time home buyer assistance. Your narrative could simply be we assisted 10 home buyers with down payment assistance and that's it. Now on the other hand, let's say you don't have to help anybody and you don't spend any money. Well your narrative could help explain why you haven't reached any accomplishments or you haven't spent any money. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe you lost some staff people and you had to restaff the position. Maybe the marketing uh, was incorrect or, you know, people didn't want to pay back loans. They prefer grants. You know, have something in that narrative to explain uh, basically, A, why is, why is there a delay? Or B, if there's no delay, where are you in the pro process? So, um, I know I'm rambling a little bit, but to get back to your question, I would say uh, for every CDBG activity, I would really encourage you to have some sort of narrative, uh, especially for those that don't have any draws or don't have any numeric accomplishments. So the second part to the, that answer is if you have any numeric accomplishments or you have any drawdowns for that activity, try to get those in before December 31st. Okay, so it's okay if you don't have any numeric accomplishments or any drawdowns. Um, the activity is not just automatically canceled, but use that narrative to explain why. 
Tina, would you like to add anything to that? Uh, well, right. It is very important to enter your accomplishments uh, as soon as they are realized, especially for CDBG. So uh, if you have uh, beneficiaries throughout the year, such as your direct benefit, and you've helped uh, so many people with your public service activity, don't wait until December 31st to enter that information. You can enter it at the time the benefit was realized. Uh, same with home. As soon as uh, you've uh, met the rehab and the homeowner is benefiting from the activity, uh, enter the accomplishments and change it to completed. As for the narrative, uh, you're right, it is a good idea to keep in constant communication with your grant manager, uh, but also update the narrative in IDIS. Now, I can't say that we're going to read every single one of them, uh, but we do look at the narrative and it is helpful for reporting. Yeah, by all means. Okay, uh, any other questions, Shauna? Yes, Bill, we have several. Oh, okay. The next one is, um, what if a project is going to receive funding for more than one year? What year do we set up the activity um, in regards to the program year? Um, and then they go on to say, in rental housing, we almost always split the funding. Okay, so um, I know we, we have some good examples laid out in the guide in the FAQ, but just quickly, um, I, I'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just show you an example for Sunbury because I believe we have some activities in here. So um, here, why don't we do this? So we used this a, a couple times as an example. You can see that in uh, for Sunbury they have a, a project called Chestnut Street Utilities Reconstruction. Um, and they're, they're associated with multiple years. One is for 13. Maybe I'll just sort this by uh, year. Uh, so they have one for 13, one for 14, and one 15. You, you actually see a, a couple multiples just because um, I've been in here messing around and, and setting up a couple examples. But uh, so in this example, Chestnut Street Utilities, they actually use part of their 13 allocation, part of their 14 allocation, and part of their 15 allocation all for the same uh, basically scope of work. So uh, what you would do is you would set up three different activities, one under each year. All of the accomplishments are going to be under the oldest year's activity. So in this case, the oldest year's activity is 2013. So this is the activity that's going to have all of the accomplishments. And then for 14 and 15, you're going to use that flag that says, are accomplishments reported under another year, and you're going to answer yes. So that's the CDBG example. If we're talking home, and again, again, I know this can be different uh, or kind of confusing, but for home, HUD has different rules. They say each basically address that you fund, and, and they use the term home project, but basically if you have one rental property, and it's going to get money from your 13, 14, and 15 allocation. Um, that that might be a stretch. I don't know. It, it, I guess it's possible. But uh, under home, you, you're only allowed to set up one activity for that one address. So just keep in mind that home and CDBG, uh, the rules are going to be different. Hopefully I answered that question uh, sufficiently. Um, if not, uh, please please write back and uh, I can go into a little bit more detail on the home. Um, what's next, Shauna? Um, when you were doing the draw example, I think earlier, this is when this came in, Bill. So um, the question is, why generate a voucher for an amount more than you need to draw down? Oh, well, I, I was assuming that, you know, I, that was really just for demonstrations. Uh, Okay. Yeah, folks. That that I, I was enjoying more mon more money than I dispersed. You know, that's that's a, that's a very good point. Is you know, you only want to draw the amount that you need. <laughs> okay. Um, the next one is: Should we enter one uh, IDS activity number, um, but we could have multiple contracts, or should we do each activity uh, in IDIS per contract? Yeah. So if they're referring to uh, the blueback contract. Um, and so they have one scope of work that's going to be funded from multiple bluebacks, multiple contracts. That's when you're going to get into a case like this where you're going to have several activities 
to represent that one scope of work. And the reason that is is because in this case, uh, Chestnut was funded from a 2013 contract, a 2014 contract, and a 2015 contract. But again, for home, that, that rule does not apply. Uh, if you have one, let's say, a, a really large rental development and it's funded from multiple bluebacks, I don't know if this is the case. And uh, again, uh, you know, Tina, you can help me correct this if, if possible, but, you know, that, that would still be just one activity even if it's coming from multiple allocations. That's handled through the other agency. Um, the, the housing finance agency. So I don't know if uh, anybody on the call would, would handle a situation like that. So if I may interject, uh, there could Please. be a case where you have a housing rehab activity that you're finishing up uh, blue back from 2014 and you maybe only have, like in your example, only $500 left in that contract, which isn't enough to complete the whole house. So you're taking some money from your 2015 contract you would still have a single IDIS activity number. Again, just for home, you would have a single IDIS activity number, but in your demonstration, you would have uh, two different funding sources, one of 2014 funds and one as of 2015 funds. So like you did with the example, you had, I believe, $33 in the uh, 2014 and 10000 of 2015. Right, right. So this is this is what Tina is referring to. So this is a perfect example of, uh, you know, let's let's imagine that this available in funding is actually now zero because I used up the last five hundred dollars. Um, that's what it would look like. Is you're going to have one rehab activity. You're not setting up two rehab activities for one thousand Market Street and one thousand one Market Street. You're basically going to suck up the remaining dollars from 14 or from whatever year here and then fund the remainder out of 15. Um, and you'll probably run into similar situations uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you do a lot of rehabs, for, you know, between 15 and 16 and 16 and 17. I think it's probably going to be the rule rather, the, rather than the exception where, um, you know, you, it's never going to be super clean where you say, okay, I have just enough remaining from this final allocation to do this one house. It, you're probably always going to have at least one house that takes a little bit from one year and the remainder from the next. So, Bill, back on um, the person who asked about the accomplishments, so she clarified it is home. Um, and she also asked um, you choose one program year for home. So basically she's asking, like, which year do you put the accomplishments under when you have one activity? That's a good question. Um, you know, it, I, I don't think it um, it really matters, and I don't think the DCED has, and Tina, you can correct me if, I, if, if I've forgotten, but um, I don't think it really matters if you put it under 13 or 14 or the, the earlier year or the later year. When you look at the PRO2, it's going to be a little confusing. The PRO2 is the List of Activities Report because it's going to show you over budget on one on one year and under budget on the next. Uh, I guess I would recommend to put it uh, associated with the program year uh, where the majority of the funding is coming out of. So if this is the case, in this example, I have $500 coming out of 14 and the remainder, uh, the large remainder coming out of 15, I would associate that with 15. But Tina, do you have any, any words of wisdom regarding that? Uh, in which year to associate that single activity with? Uh, you are correct. It's not going to demonstrate nicely on a PRO2 list of activities uh, by project report. So if DCD is trying to tie out uh, your blue back, your contract, if it's for $500,000 and if we look at a PRO2 activity report, it's not going to tie out exactly. So what we will have to do is uh, look at the how the activity funds were drawn it will be a little clearer for us. We would be able to use different reports, uh, but for the PRO2, it will be less useful for us. So uh, in reality, it, uh, I, I agree with you, Bill. You can use the one with the largest source of funding, but we will be more looking at the activity and the funding sources than the IDIS project number. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's just one of those quirks that, um, you know, it, it, HUD would like to make everything, you know, nice and neat and wrap it in a bow by program year and by allocation, but there's going to be some examples where you're going to have activities that are funded from multiple allocations, and it's, it's going to be a little bit messier 
So uh, what I would recommend is you try to, to limit it just to one activity and, and you don't have a lot of activities that are split between grant years. Um, and, and, you know, just going through the course of events, that's how it should play out anyways. You're going to, you know, let's say you, you propose to do 10 units, um, you're probably going to fund nine in the 10th. You're going to have to pull, pull a little bit from that year and uh, the, the remainder from the following year. Okay, so um, the next question um, is if, and this is back on another example, Bill. So it says that you had an invoice for $10,000, and the example that you showed, we did, um, there was 500 left in 2011. Um, would you want to pay the 500 from 2011 and then 9,500 from 2015 to take care of all the old money? Basically using oldest money first. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if, at that point, you know, once you, once you get to the one activity that's split between the two years, um, I mean, uh, there's always a push to use those oldest dollars first. Those are going to be the first to, uh, to be faced with a commitment test, the first to be part, subject to a disbursement test, the first that would be subject to expiring funds. So, you know, if, if you have an activity that is split between two years like that, I think uh, it would be a safe, good rule of thumb just to use to use the oldest funds first and then, uh, you know, work your way to the newer funds. Bill, and if I may just add that you still have to watch your timeliness test. In your example, uh, you had selected the 2013 year, but IDIS, the first in, first out, uses, used the 2011. So it, in your example, it wasn't really 2011 funds. It was your 2013. So you have to watch your three-year benefit test for CDBG. You, uh, and making sure that you meet your national objective within those three years. So yes, you should use the oldest funds first, but you have to get the entire amount expended and meet your national objective by the end of those three years. Right, for CDBG. Good questions. Uh, any others, Shauna? Um, so there is one final question, at least right now, unless somebody snuck one in there. Um, I'm new and I need to log in for IDIS. Who do I speak to? Okay, Tina, do you want to handle that one? That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can either send Crystal an uh, email or send uh, me an email and we will get the uh, form and link out to you. And, yeah, and Crystal's email I know is on the last slide, so if you just hang on, we'll get Crystal's email up there and, and she'll be sure to uh, share that with Tina as well. I can also throw it in the chat for this person too. Okay, okay, very good. Thanks, Shauna. Okay, well, I'm going to move on and uh, and do the demonstration for CDBG activities. So again, uh, I've set up an activity um, for uh, an example uh, for CDBG. Uh, I set up uh, Senior Center ADA improvements. So if we uh, go back to that activity, again, um, one of the big decisions you'll have to make is which project to include it under. And to do that, you use this button right here. Uh, when you first get here, it will say uh, choose project. And now it says change projects since I selected one. Uh, so uh, again, you just hit that. You make sure you choose the right year. Don't choose program, just choose year. And then on the funding screen, you can see that uh, I just have one pot of money. It's uh, CDBG, and again, the system knows that because based on the information I entered during setup, the fund type is SU. I have $225,500. I want to go ahead and fund it out of that, so I hit Add Edit. And again, you're going to see that split between 2015 funds, or uh, pre-2015 funds, rather, and then everything after 2015, 2015 included. And you can see here that Sunbury doesn't have any money um, associated with those old years. So hopefully, if uh, if you looked at your IDS setup letter and said, oh, these funds are supposed to come from 2014, that's when you know, hey, I have to call DCED. This screen is not matching up with my IDS setup letter. Maybe there's an issue. Maybe I have to do some troubleshooting. Um, in this case, I'm going to assume this looks right. Uh, it's, my IDS setup letter says it should come from 2015. So I will go ahead and put that in there, 225. I'm just going to use the whole amount and hit save. And 
this should be a nice clean example. So it's all all the funding is coming from 15. So when I go to do a drawdown for this particular activity, I'm just going to paste that number in there. You can see that the system is automatically pulling it from 15. Uh, I'm going to assume that you guys work quick and you got all the work done and you need all the money. I hit confirm voucher. And again, you can see that, that those dollars, since I specified it's coming from 15 on my funding screen, the drawdown will also come from 15 as well. Okay? Just one quick note, since this is a CDBG activity, let's say, uh, you know, no work was done in 15, or basically no money was done uh, drawn in 15, but I want to report my accomplishments correctly. Just to kind of highlight that difference in reporting, I'm going to pull up that activity. So let's say in uh, let's say in 15, I did my uh, my design work and I did my procurement, and then in 16 is when I actually accomplished all my work. So uh, under Add CDBG Accomplishments, before December 31st of 2015, this is what I would have put in. I would have specified 2013, 2015 as my accomplishment year, uh, maybe environmental, complete, procurement complete, uh, maybe uh, architectural or engineering complete. I guess engineering would come first. And then maybe uh, construction. Due to begin in March 2016. Uh, we'll wait till the snow melts. And uh, finish in September. 2016. So again, I'm, I don't have any accomplishment data to report. I don't know who has helped. Uh, maybe I didn't even have any draws in 15. But again, I'm providing this narrative for each one of my open activities. I'll go ahead and save that. So uh, then uh, DCD would have that accomplishment uh, for their 2015 caper. And again, as Tina said, they might not read it, but uh, you know, if HUD starts bothering them about this activity, they at least have this information to fall back on uh, to basically explain where they are in the process. So 2016 rolls around, and this activity is done. I'm done with this activity. I need to report to HUD all of the wonderful things I've done and all the people I helped. Um, here's the problem: is I don't want to report that under my 2015 year. I have to use these buttons up here at the top to add a new accomplishment year and type in 2016. So anything I put on this screen is going to show up in my 2016 caper. So project complete, uh, center will assist, let's say, maybe 100 seniors annually. And then at that point, once I have all the beneficiary data, I could put that in here, let's say 60 white, maybe 30 black, and probably be 10 Asian. And I would come in here and I would report all of this data. And I would be happy and DCED would be happy. Okay? So again, um, I didn't, the, the key rule here is I have to separate out my accomplishment data by the year in which it happened. So this is one activity associated with my 15 allocation, but since it spans multiple years, I have one data set for my 2015 year. This is what happened in 2015. And I have one data set for what happened in my 2016 year. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw it back to Shauna. Any questions about um, that demonstration for CDBG or anything else we've seen so far? No questions at this time, Bill. Okay, well, folks, I know I didn't give you a lot of time if on that CDBG sheet, 
CDBG demonstration. So uh, keep typing. If you do have questions, uh, we have a couple more slides to go over, and we can always circle back and, uh, and cover it again. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to go back to uh, the slides. Move this over a little bit. Okay. So um, basically, I didn't do all of these bits for the uh, demonstration. I did show you uh, the project selection and uh, under the activity setup. That's the kind of the key point when we're talking about grants-based accounting. And then the funding, again, this is the, the heart of the matter, is the information you fill, select on the funding screen, that is going to drive uh, what allocation it's associated for. So even though we choose the project up here under activity setup, um, and that should match with the funding information, the funding is really kind of the, where the system derives and understands uh, what allocation is coming from. For CDBG, again, we, uh, we set up the activity, we chose the project, and we went to the funding, and for the CDBG example, uh, you could see that when I went to draw the funds, um, it was based on what information I had set up under funding. So uh, again, the key there is if you choose 15 on the drawdown, it should show up as 15. If, it's, if you're uh, funding it from prior to 15, 14 and earlier, we really have no control what year it's going to show up under uh, when we do the drawdown. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about with our reports right now. Okay, so uh, we're not going to kind of get into the technical details about uh, how to do download reports. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We are going to talk about a couple of reports that you can use, though, to basically verify that your activities are set up correctly and that the information and the draws will be coming from the right allocation. So the first one we're going to talk about is the PRO2. Uh, this is also known as the list of activities by program year and project. Basically, uh, it lists all of your activities, first by plan year, then by project. Uh, and what we can do is to make sure that uh, the activities are associated with the right project. And again, that should also match the IDIS setup letter in most cases. In some cases, um, for you know, when an activity is um, for CDVG, it's funded from multiple allocations. You're going to see it multiple times on this report. Um, for home, uh, especially if, if it's that case where it's that last rehab of the year and it's funded a little bit out of one year and a little bit out of the next year, you're only going to see that activity once, and that's where the totals on the PR2 are not going to, to match. So. Um, let me go ahead and, and pull that up. So this is the CDBG PRO2 for, uh, for Sunbury. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so you guys can see a little bit more. So this is an example. Uh, again, this is Sunbury. You can see first it's organized organized by year. Here's 2014, here's 2015. For each year, you're going to see a different project. So in, in 2014, Sunbury got money from entitlement, and they also got competitive funding. So you're going to see that right there. Um, if you are included home, you might see home projects as well, but I limited this project, or this report rather, just to CDBG. So I, we have our years, we have our projects, and then we have our activities. And uh, if I scroll up a little bit, you can see the actual columns. So this column is our activity ID. That's good to know, especially if you're, uh, if you're searching for an activity to fund or draw down or, or reopen to, uh, to report accomplishments. We have our activity name. We have our activity status, program, funded amount, drawn amount, and balance. So um, again, when you're looking at these project totals and these year totals, um, those might line up, especially for CDBG, these should come close uh, to your allocations. Um, if it doesn't, that means maybe you haven't set up an activity and uh, you still need to set up that activity to realize your full allocation. Um, so for CDBG, at the, end, you know, at the end of the day, these funded amounts and drawn amounts, these should line up with your allocations. Um, so this is for, uh, for 
for CDBG. But again, this doesn't necessarily mean that these activities are associated with the right, right allocations according to the funding screen. This is based on the plan year and project you selected when you set up the activity. So it's organized based on this year right here, not on the funding screen. So um, this could lure you into a false sense of security, I guess, if it's showing up correctly here, but it could still mean that you have it incorrect on the funding screen. So just, just it, it should match, hopefully it should match, but uh, there's a possibility it may not. Well, the next report we go over, the PRO5, that's really kind of the, uh, the final, once the drawdown, you can see what year it's coming from. So the PR, uh, PRO2 for home, uh, this is an example of the PRO2 for home. This is for, um, this is for 2000, looks like for 2009. But I wanted to give you an example. You can see that they use the uh, street addresses. That's what you want. And uh, on this final activity here, let's say it's uh, 1060 Packer Street. Let's say um, this is, uh, you know, the total amount 34,000. But maybe you didn't have all of that coming from the 2009 grant and you had to steal some from the next grant. Um, on this report, it's all going to be associated with 2009. But when you drop down into the funding information for the screen, you would see that it's split between two different years. So when you look at what that's going to mean is your totals here, this funded amount may not match up with your allocation if some of this money should be coming from an older allocation. So it's correct, everything's correct, it just means that you can't really rely on this, this number here, this program total, um, just based on the way IDIS rules are, and that, that you couldn't have two activities. Ideally, for CDBG, right, we could have two activities for 1060 Packer Street, one under one year and one under another, and that would mean that our funded amounts are correct at each program here. But for home, we can't do that. We have to have all the costs associated with Packer Street under a single activity. So I guess, it, you know, long story short, these reports are not going to be perfect. You might have to kind of drill down and do some reconciliation uh, based on the information presented. All right, let me go jump into the PRO5 because I think that report is going to be more helpful to you in the long run. Oops, we don't want to do that. We want to go back to our PowerPoint. We have a screen. Okay, I guess we don't have a, uh, a, a slide specific on the PRO5 that details it out. We just have some examples. So let me go straight to that example. Okay, so this is what the PRO5 looks like. This is called the Drawdown Report by Project and Activity. And I believe I ran this for all, all activities. Let me get this out of the way here. And I'm going to pull up a more recent activity. So here you can see uh, Chestnut uh, Street construction. This is a 2014 activity. So uh, the PRO5 uh, is organized in the same manner as the PRO2, where it's going to show you your program year first, then your project, and then your activity. And for each activity, I'm going to zoom in real close so you guys can see it. It's going to give you each one of your vouchers. So you have your voucher number, you have the voucher line item, the status, and the date. And you can see what grant numbers that those drawdowns are associated with. So here's a good example of what the system used to look like for before this whole grant-based accounting got started. So all of this is based on FIFO, where I have a 2014 project, but you can see that some of the money was charged to 13, some of the money was charged to 10, 14, 14. So this is what grant-based accounting is trying to eliminate, where under grant-based accounting, if this is a 15 activity and you fund it from 15 on the funding screen, then all of these draws are going to be associated with the 15 allocation, okay? So 
So when you're looking at this report, for anything funded from before 2015, before this whole grant based accounting got started, and you see that this 13 and 10 is not aligning with which project you set up, that's okay because we didn't have any control. What you want to watch out for is if you funded it on 15 and you want it to come out on 15 and it's still pulling from older years, that's when you have to call DCED and say, listen, you know, something's going on. Uh, the, the draws for my 15 activity are not being associated with the 15 allocation. So this is a good report to just verify that the grants are coming out of the allocations that you want. Hopefully that makes sense to you. I know I went through a little quickly, so I'm going to throw it over to Shauna. Shauna, are there any questions about reports or anything else that we've covered right now? Sorry, Bill. Um, there's only one question, but it's about it's back on reporting accomplishment. And so <laughs> okay. I know. So they're asking about if there are funds left in 2013, okay, and they did a budget mod, and they have a new project with funding out of 15 um, as well as 16, and they're asking okay. about accom accomplishments. So would accomplishments go underneath 13 or 15? Um, did they specify whether it's a CDBG activity or a home activity? They did not. I'm assuming it's out of CDBG, so I'm going to go with CDBG. So if this is an activity <coughs> that you're going to use a little bit of $13, some $15, and $16, um, what that's going to look like, uh, I'm going to get back to IDIS, is um, if you would look at, and again, I'm going to search for Chestnut, it, it would look like that Chestnut example we had where uh, for CEBG, and I'm assuming it's CEBG, is you would have one activity funded with the balance of the $13. You had one activity funded with whatever portion it's coming out of 15 and one activity coming out of 16. So you have three separate activities. Now, the issue that you need to watch out for and be careful of, and, and this is one of our hot topics, right, is uh, since you want to commit $13 to that, that activity is going to have to be finished by 2016, right? Because you just because this do, these, um, these dollars from 13 are being uh, associated with a, a newer activity, that does not extend your timeline. You're still going to have to meet the original timeline for drawdowns and project completion that are associated with that 2013 contract. So. Um, if you have those older $13, um, and it, it, let's say that 15, 16 activity that you're talking about, you know, it's going gangbusters, it's basically done already, um, yeah, go ahead. But I really want to caution you that if that activity is going to drag out beyond 16, then that's probably not the right activity to use those, those 13 uh, balances with. Tina, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, that's that's correct. Uh, you do have to watch your three-year timeliness. And I also just want to add, I, I don't think we've covered it today, but because you have three different years bluebacks in there, three different activities, all three must remain open until that national objective is met. You can't change the activity status code to complete it until you have beneficiaries. Uh, so all three will need to remain open in IDIS. That's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. So uh, the status column right here, folks, if, it's, uh, if it has not yet met the national objective, this status code has to remain open. Uh, by, by marking that complete, you're basically signaling to have two things, that it spent all of its money and it met a national objective. So you can't mark it complete just because it spent all of its money, especially if it has other activities associated with it that uh, are still going. Okay, um, any other questions, Shauna? Um, she just clarified it with CDBG, so she said thanks. Um, okay. So no more questions at this time. Okay, so uh, one of the slides that you'll see, and this is again just kind of pointing out what I was trying to raise on the PRO5 is, you know, here's a 14 activity 
you can see the draws are coming from all sorts of years, 13, 10, 14, um, even though I specified 14 here. So again, don't freak out because um, this is how the system works for all of those pre-$15. We don't get to specify what year it's coming from. If this was a 15 year, however, I would want all of these to be 15s, and if they're not, that's when you can start to freak out, and that's when you should call DCED and say something's, something's not right. Okay, our final poll of the day. Um, do you need one-on-one -on -one technical assistance on Grant Spate to County? Your two choices are, no, I have what I need, or B, yes, one-on-one -on -one technical assistance would be helpful. So, uh, Chantel, if you can go ahead and open up that poll. Okay, and the polls are now open. And the poll will be closing in about um, 15 seconds. And now I'm sharing the results. Okay, so I can't see it. It looks like only one person maybe? Oh no, 12%. 10 might want some one-on-one -on -one technical assistance, okay? If you are interested in technical assistance, if you look at that final slide, uh, you can see uh, you have uh, some contact information there uh, for Crystal. So uh, go ahead and shoot Crystal an email. Um, in summary, I just wanna, uh, again, stress timely communication and uh, uh, if you're not getting what you need, if you don't have, if you do still have questions, please, please, please reach out to DCED. This is new to them as well. So uh, we just want to make sure that there's a common understanding across all levels here. Um, it's not rocket science, but there might be a couple of situations we have not yet addressed. And, uh, and we want to try to make this as easy as possible for you. Uh, so we're not all banging our heads against the walls at the end of the day. So uh, if you do have questions, um, if you do have uh, need for additional technical assistance, please reach out to DCED and uh, we'll try to get you what you need. Um, with that, uh, I have nothing else. Uh, Shauna, if there's any additional questions, uh, maybe we can address those now. Otherwise, I think we can, uh, we can wrap things up. Uh, no more questions in the queue. Okay, Tina, would you like to say any closing thoughts? Well, I'd just like to thank everyone for attending and uh, remind you that the information, the PowerPoint, and uh, the frequently asked questions and the manual will be uploaded to the resource library uh, probably by the end of September. Great. Well, thank you all for participating, um, and uh, have a great rest of your day.